As tech enthusiasts, we've always enjoyed playing with the newest toys, because who doesn't want to be the first kid on the block to have the latest gadget? And today we're pleased to welcome another adult child to the show to discuss the geeky things that he's currently fascinated with. Jeremy Kaplan, the editor-in-chief of Digital Trends, is here to dork out on some super cool stuff that is soon coming your way. We are the real geeks, not those wannabes you see on the Big Bang Theory. Take it away, Ivy. Ready for your hot fix of tech news with the latest apps, sexy software, and groovy gadgets? You got it with the bad boys of tech. Take it away, gentlemen. And welcome to the Bad Boys of Tech, the show for the dweebs, nerds, dorks, geeks, and everybody who loves technology, gadgets, software, and apps. I'm Joel Kahn. He's Travis Wright. And joining us today, the editor-in-chief of DigitalTrends.com, a site that welcomes 30 million people each month to talk about the latest in technology, Mr. Jeremy Kaplan. Hello, Jeremy. Thank you very much for having me on your show. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here. And you're so enthusiastic. I love that. I'm pumped. I love talking yeah, about no, technology. Like, give me a chance and I'll do it. I get home. My wife's like, could you stop it again? I mean, we've already had this conversation. Please. So I get the chance to talk to you guys. It's great. Yeah, we were kind of hoping you'd come on and be like, all right, is, are we done yet? Is, <laughs> what time is that? <laughs> this again? Mr. Travis Wright, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. This is a great time. We love Jeremy. We love Digital Trends. Uh, both Joel and I were on an episode of Digital Trends recently, separately, where we were talking about the cryptos and technology and had a great chance to meet Jeremy. And uh, we said, hey, let's have him on the show. And here he is. Did uh, you guys like that. the way I, I made fun of the Big Bang Theory there in the opener? Well, I just think that we need to put some some laugh tracks over your jokes. <laughs> can I can I confess? Can I confess? I, I, I like that you, show. I do. Okay, so if you go to YouTube, actually in our show notes, badboysoftech.com forward slash 009, there's a link to YouTube to a video where somebody, there's actually a number of them that you could find this easily. Just search Big Bang Theory, no laugh track, but they've removed the laugh track. Watch it without the laugh track. And it is it is so inane and so unfunny <laughs> without the laugh track. He's been grumping about this for about two years. Yeah, like I can I can attest to this. He really hates that show because I think he saw a video of that. Because no, because they were going to have the Big Bang Theory Bitcoin episode. He was like, "Oh, I really hate Big Bang Theory." And so, no, yeah. actually, um, several years ago, early in the show, they uh, they made a reference to our app, the iFart app Fantastic. on Big Bang Theory. So, so I love them for that. I just don't understand i think it's written by people who like to caricature what geeks are but aren't really or mm. or maybe it's got to do with the fact that they make like a billion dollars an episode and you don't that i'm just throwing is, it out there yeah ow that hurts my heart a little <laughs> yeah bit. i don't either all right well with that <laughs> that, that does that does hurt. we actually had uh cz who is the founder of binance which is the one the top crypto exchange we had him on Bad Crypto episode 250, and um, we realized he launched Binance the exact same month we launched Bad Crypto, and he's making a billion dollars every three months, and we're not. So that's good. That hurts so our thanks. hearts a little bit, too. That's well, what good. we're going to do... So he can buy us all for our uh, We're glad to have you here, Jeremy. We are going to talk about some of the latest gadgets and tech that is uh, really on your radar right now. But first of all, to the news... And let's all sing happy birthday to the World Wide Web because it is now officially 30 years old. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. Thank you, Tim Berners-Lee, for the web. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going, keep happy going. Happy birthday, dear World Wide Web. Happy there birthday to you. Thank you, Tim Berners-Lee. So 30 years old, does that mean it's middle-aged now? So it's going to start getting cranky and it needs to get some naps? And okay, when, it's buying a Ferrari when did you decide that 30 was middle age? I don't know. You know, I, I'll tell you, I know exactly when I made that decision. So when I was turning 25, I decided that 1 to 25 is young, 25 to 50 is middle-aged, 
and 75 and on, you're just old. Oh, my gosh. So, so that perspective. Well, what about 50 to 75? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. 50 to 75 is old. And then after 75, it does. It's aging. You're dead. You're that dead. was the, this is a 25 year old oh, man. That's like, right, right. Drawing some fine lines. Ooh, yeah, same. that's going to change. I turned 55 <laughs> this year, and I am definitely not anywhere near old. So, you know, you're going to have to redefine that. What's really funny is when you turn 25, that is the year that all the synapses are in your brain, all the dendrites fully connect and you are fully adult and matured. Like at that point, your brain doesn't grow anymore. It just cells replace. So you're still kind of a child, you know, up until 25 in some respects. Says the 55 year old. Yeah. <laughs> well 25 year old me was an idiot i mean 55 uh, year old me is kind of a, a moron too but 25 you know in your early 20s you think you know stuff and you should be working for nasa because you know everything mm -hmm. and you don't know anything oh yeah i've always thought this like if if i had like success in my 20s like my ego would have been so ridiculous i would have been a horrible person so it's like way it's way better than how all these challenges and like crappy things happen to me because it's knocked me down several levels that i had to get back up and i go wow i'm not nearly as cool as i thought i was so that's good <laughs> so jeremy what year did you get on the web uh i was in college i went to college from 1992 to 96 which was the exact moment that a lot of this stuff was being born and i remember being in school surfing the web on a tiny crappy little mac classic or whatever it was uh and then ncsa mosaic comes out which is the first web browser and i remember being like oh man something just happened image maps uh, I saw whoa it. yeah right there's like four websites out here and they're all terrible but they exist it's a thing yeah. what about you i can click these blue things these are amazing uh you know i had a roommate in 92 that had the computer had the had a computer and i I would get on some BBS type stuff with him, but I was just like, man, this thing is still so slow. Like, so in 96 was when I really got on and I was at the university of Kansas and I was in the computer lab. And so they had like a really fast connection. And I got on this website called WBS. WBS was like WBS.net. It was the world broadcasting service is what they called it. And it was the best chat that I'd ever been. It was unbelievable. Like people could throw up animated gifs on there and, and like people were in a room. And so it was funny. Like I had a buddy of mine that was in the computer lab as well. And we were like in these chat rooms, like trolling people before trolling was a thing. And uh, we were just cracking each, like we would spend hours in there just like, this is amazing. And uh, had, had great conversations, made some friends that I'm in WBS that I'm literally still a friend with today from that's great uh, 23 years ago from from getting online it's crazy fascinating so i yeah. was actually dialing in i'm going to date everybody right now in 1980 on my trs80 on my 300 baud modem into bulletin board so there's the old part for you okay um so technically i have been in the online world now for almost 40 40 years is that possible yeah almost 40 years um and i and i got on the web in 1994 and built my first website in 1995 so um that means my first website will turn 25 next year mm. okay you were one of the very first websites like oh. one of the first 20,000 or so right yep in 1995 there was 18,000 sites by the end of the year and i launched mine in july so you got to figure maybe 10 11 12,000 they don't they don't give you an official number you know you are the, the boom. yeah yeah tattooed i remember back in the day you could buy the domain you could just literally say i want this domain and they would give it to you right and uh, i remember having a conversation with some friends back then and i was like that's really interesting this is gonna this is going to be really cool down the road i can tell it's gonna be cool but i had no patience for the slowness of it i was just like oh like even in the year 2000 like whenever you're on napster and you're like come on mp3 20 minutes from now like like that just bugged yep. me so the patience aspect of it my patience really wore thin when it came to how slow the internet is. Now it's so fast and we still get impatient, right? I mean, just as we're going into the news, <laughs> Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp were out this week, right? For, for, for a while. And people were so upset about it. They're like, Oh my God, <gasps> time to get some work well, done. We've all, for <laughs> we've all forgotten how to go outside and take a walk. It's like, there's other things one can do in life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. true. I, I, you know what? If uh, if Facebook's down, I'm, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm like, if Facebook goes away forever, I'm not going to freak out about it because I know who all my friends are. I have their phone number, you know, here on my my phone. 
And, uh, you know, if, if my fake friends aren't part of my everyday experience anymore, and I, what, I don't mean fake friends that they're fake people. I just mean that the relationships are very surfacey on, on social sure. media, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll be okay. So do you guys, uh, did, did either one of you have a GeoCities or a tripod or a MySpace? <laughs> I was uh, I was on the MySpace for a while back on the internet back in the day. Who, who was, was your stuff. first friend? Uh, Tom, of course. Mm. I was on the Angel Fire. Fire. Angel Fire, yeah. Angel oh. Fire. I got on Angel Fire. There's still a site out there, Angel Fire, because what it is is like whichever. I remember the URL structure was like you know whatever state that was available at that time. It was just like so. It was like angelfire.com slash co slash whatever. But my state it didn't give me that option or something because there was none in that state or something. I don't know. So there's a, there's a Travster page out there. It was like, cause I, <laughs> I, I literally wanted to go out and figure out HTML. So I, I was like, how do I build a website here? So I literally went out within my 36 hours of really getting online. I was like, wow, okay, this is really cool. How does it work? And then I figured out how to build a website within my first 38, 36 hours online, built my first site and started tweaking it. And it's still out there somewhere. I found it. One day I took a screen cap of it, but I don't know where that screen cap is. But it was Angel Fire the Travster, so I don't know where that is. It's probably like a, a lot of blink tags, right? A lot of Just blink tags. Oh, stop blink tags. Yeah, I was doing stand up comedy at the time. I figured I needed a a, a page for my comedy career. Uh, speaking of, awesome. you know, you mentioned Facebook and Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp being down. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and talk about that. This was uh, Wednesday that this took place and was perhaps the most serious uh, serious outage that facebook has had jeremy talk a little bit about that well what's interesting is facebook is not one to go down very frequently there are other sites that other social media sites that, that I, I feel like are i wouldn't call them unstable because we're talking about 99.99 whatever uptime but when somebody like facebook goes down that is a big deal and you know given i, I think there's sort of a narrative that's been going on in the world about technology sites and, and the role that technology has been playing i think there's a lot of like overall discomfort with with technology these days you know sites like facebook that are perhaps taking advantage of our personal data there's the amazon spying on us through its alexa th meme that goes on the there's like this is the underlying unhappiness with technology and so i think that this really fed into that narrative of people are like why the hell is this free service down how dare they take advantage of me by not giving me the thing i haven't paid for so it's, it's just, <laughs> right. it felt like a very weird response to me you know, there was something. There's, there's. I put my tinfoil hat on every now and again, and uh, just the day before, there was some conversation around uh, Facebook getting indicted for how they share our data, and then the very next day, Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp goes down. So to me, I go, "Oh, what's going down over there?" Or, you know, that that made me have some questions. I go, oh, are they are they hiding some things now? Or they had to kill some servers because they had to wipe some stuff or who knows? But that was a really strange coincidence within 20, actually within 12 hours of those indictments going down or whatever. All of a sudden, Facebook and every single major Facebook property goes down. Things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, suck is like, turn on the digital shredders. <laughs> Leech bit, baby. Leech bit, baby. Why, what, I mean, with the cloth? Wipe them with the cloth. <laughs> you used to be able to go to facebook.com slash super secret stealing stuff site. And now you can't go there anymore. So something's happening. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting to see how people do freak out when they don't have access. You know, I, I remember trying as I it, it, first everybody thinks it's them, right? You know, oh, I can't post my Instagram story. Uh, Facebook is loading real slow. What's wrong with my computer? And then all you got to do is go hop over on Twitter and see trending, you know, Facebook down, Instagram down, WhatsApp down. And everybody's like, like, this mm -hmm. is an apocalypse. It, it, mm -hmm. It's not. And I know some people depend upon these free services for their business. But the real apocalypse was happening here in Denver. We had the snow apocalypse. <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> winds were like blowing snow sideways. and It was crazy. And every they closed the schools and like real life impact. You know, and people getting hurt and stranded on the highways. Okay, mm -hmm. you can't log in and post your your selfie. Boo hoo! I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. You know, I did it. Here's what was going on. Like that day, I was so on. I there were so many different to dos that we had to do around different sites and stuff. I didn't even notice that it was down because I I didn't jump on Facebook. 
Um, I did later on in the afternoon get on Instagram and I went to the bad boys at tech and then that page wouldn't load. And I was like, well, that's weird. And then I went to mine and then, and so I, that's what happened. Like, oh, okay. So I'm screwy. And then I was chatting with someone on WhatsApp and the chats would work, but sending an image didn't work. Like I was sending some funny memes and those would just spin and spin. So I, all right, well, guess what? I'm getting, going back to work. I got things to do. So, uh, that was fun that day. Isn't it funny that. We uh, people are like, where were you when Kennedy got shot? Where were you when the planes exactly. hit, you know, the Twin Towers? Where were you when Facebook went down? What did you yeah, do for the 20 minutes you couldn't get online? The great Facebook outage of yeah. March. Oh, it wasn't 20 minutes. It was the better song. part of the day. It didn't impact my life at all. Yeah, don't, don't make light of this. It was it was hours we're talking about here, Jeremy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should not have made, made light of that. A, a truly serious situation with some heavy gravitas speaking about a truly heavy situation with some uh serious gravitas uh travis you came upon this story why don't you talk about uh facebook and elizabeth warren oh yes facebook so you know elizabeth warren the other day she was like um one of the campaign things she wants to do is literally to break up facebook break up google break up the big tech giants and then so she uh because she said that they're censoring and there's a lot of problems with that and so she placed some ads on Facebook talking about her campaign. And then Facebook deleted all of her ads, which <laughs> which is like, hey, don't be advertising trying to break us up. That ain't going to fly around here. So but then Facebook said, oh, oh, it's an accident. We're going to restore. We're going to restore those ads. So Facebook, everything is always an accident with Facebook. And Mark Zuckerberg is great at apologizing for stuff. Oh, we didn't know that was going to happen. We didn't know there was going to be these jihadists posting these videos. We didn't know Elizabeth Warren stuff was going to come. We're really mm -hmm. sorry. We're going to do better. Yeah. Honestly, we, we, he's been saying the same thing for how many years now? Has it gotten any yeah. better? Has anything changed? We're so sorry that we we cut off all of Zero Hedge. Like that happened this week too. Like anytime anybody tried to share anything Zero Hedge, er, you couldn't do it. Uh, I noticed that I was actually going to send Joel a, a, a post on something totally different. It was like bestcomicbooks.com or something. It was a link. And it said, this link here is unavailable. You cannot send it to you. This is not, uh, it, it meets our community standards. And I'm like, what? I'm sending it to my friend. Like, I'm not posting it. Like, it's not public. I'm sending it a one-to-one -one direct message. Are you telling me I can't send a one-to-one -one direct message of something that was hilarious mm -hmm. to Mr. Joel Kahn? So I didn't get to send it to oh, anybody. Sorry. That's weird. Facebook is sorry Facebook they did this to no. Elizabeth Warren, but they're only one ten twenty fourth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But wait, let's let's talk for a second, if we could, about about the idea that she's got, though. Like, what do you guys think? Does it make sense to break up some of these big tech companies? That's a good question. I, you know, mono we certainly have laws against monopolies, right, in this country, and and I'm I'm and we very clearly have some monopolies. Yeah, we clear we clearly have some monopolies. Mm -hmm. The problem that I have with these monopolies is not that they're one organization; it's that they're one sided. That's the problem. And I don't think breaking them up is going to solve that problem. It's not going to solve the problem of bias and censorship and um, treating this new town hall as though it is not a venue for free speech. Um, and so breaking them up isn't going to solve what I think the biggest problems are with the platforms. I, I would concur because, I mean, Joel and I have had many conversations around. It. It's just so frustrating how one sided it is. I mean, even Twitter by itself. Like there's statistics out there that they've done all this analysis and conservatives are blocked 21 to one over liberals on Twitter. And that's happening on the other platforms as well. And YouTube, uh, I think if anything, they should pull YouTube off from Google, most likely, or, or Alphabet or whatever. Cause that's kind of its own business. That's like to have Google and, and, and YouTube, which is number one and number two largest search engines in the world. Those should probably be separate businesses. And for all intents and purposes, they do, right? They have a different CEO. It's under Alphabet. Google's its own thing. Yahoo's, YouTube's its own thing. But they're still collaborating. There's, and I don't, I don't like the fact that Google can eliminate people from the SERPs, from the search engine result pages. That's not good. I don't like it, the, out, one algorithm for all, right? But what happens is, is like if you think this particular way, we're going to give you this algorithm and bury you. And then they're also rising up and, and recommending other things. I we, we just had a conversation with a dude on uh, Bad Crypto, and I looked at his page. It has nothing to do with mainstream media. It was trading crypto. And 
the, the, the recommended channels were CNN, MSNBC, uh, CBS, ABC. I was like, what? Like, really, they're like they're pushing mainstream media right here on YouTube. And so I think there needs to be a, a separation of of social and politics. Right. It needs to become more agnostic. I don't know if regulation is the way to make that happen, but I do know that, you know, People are being deplatformed, and once you're deplatformed, you are essentially unpersoned in today's world, right? If you have no voice online in today's town hall, then you're done, right? You, people go, oh, well, you have your own website and go to your own website. Well, still, people are, are killing their hosting if they don't like them. If, if people on the left or on the right, they don't like somebody, they go and attack them, and then they complain to their hosting company, and then they're hosting, or they'll complain to their payment processing company, and then Stripe will kill their payments, right? Or they did that thing to Gab. They said, oh, well, you don't like Twitter? We'll create your own platform. So Gab did. And then what happens is they killed their hosting, and then Stripe killed their payments. And then they had to go and do something else. So how is that fair? And then you got some guys out there. There was a dude who um, – and I, I don't align with these guys politically, but the Proud Boys, the founder of the Proud Boys, which is a conservative group. It's a black dude. Like not only did he get deep platform from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, <clears throat> Reddit, uh, and some other ones, but then also Chase killed his bank personal bank account. Like, how is this? How is that good? Taking it to the next level there. Right. So you can't even have a personal bank now because you, your beliefs. That's crazy to me. Yeah. What do you think, Jeremy? Well, I think you guys are pointing to a different issue. Also a very important one. Um, the, the fact of the matter is we have these gigantic companies that are a monopolies and b largely unregulated. So, and the, the challenge here is, both completely valid points, and I, and I stand by with you guys 100%. I think there is a lack of oversight going on there, which is le leading some – you can argue about what the balance is of liberals versus conservatives within those companies and what the agenda might be. But I, th I think it's pretty clear that there is some sort of an ag – not agenda, but some sort of a bias perhaps. And so how do you regulate that when it's – they just say, say it's an algorithm and then mm – -hmm. Congress doesn't know anything about technology. Like, well, it's an algorithm. What are we going to do? We can't. We can't fix an algorithm. It's just an algorithm. It's it's very easy for them to fall back on that kind of an argument. So I, I think we do need. A, I think we need a lot of regulation. Not a lot. Yet, at least some regulation to address this. But then those companies are too damn big. They do need to be broken up. Facebook networks how many billions of people at this point? Like mm -hmm. that is the town hall, as you were saying. And so much happens in a town hall space that has become a de facto replacement for the physical spaces we used to have where you had open conversations and you had free access to you know, politicians giving speeches, which are going to shape your opinions about the next election. And if we don't have that, it's just, it's just too much going on, on in, in, under one umbrella. I think they should definitely, if they're going to break it up, they should make sure they break off one into the Russian hacking division should be its own company. We will hack your election and tell you how to, to you should uh, to vote. Uh, in next election. But here's the thing that scares me. This regulation, this legislation is going to be designed and passed by people that in a hearing with Mark Zuckerberg said, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, how does Facebook make money? Uh, we sell ads, Senator. I mean, yeah. you know, they're so out of touch that I'm afraid that the there's no panacea, that their cure is just going to add to the problem. Right. So you're saying if I'm on Facebook, I'm I'm on the Internet? Like, I think that was literally one of the questions. And I, wow. And then Mark Zuckerberg said they're going like, <laughs> you can yeah, track me from like, Facebook yeah, to some other site. <laughs> How is that even possible? <laughs> wow. Marketing technologies. These are amazing. Yeah. There's, a, there's actually some really, there's a, there's another little tinfoil hat thing on there about Facebook, which was really amazing to me. So the NSA was creating this organization called LifeLog and LifeLog, their whole thing was, we want to track, you know, civilians' movements and what they do online all time. And life, you can search it up. It's called LifeLog. It's not a secret. It's not a conspiracy. But the conspiracy thing is they closed LifeLog and they publicly announced the closing of LifeLog the exact day Facebook was founded. Right. The exact day. And when you go, well, I think it's like February 4th, 2004 was the day they closed LifeLog and the day that Facebook was founded. And and then you look at it and you go, oh, well, Facebook was founded. And then and then uh, those Ivy League schools were the first one to adopt it. And they just sort of spread it out from there. So that's another thing that makes me go, hmm, is is this even a, a legitimate organically built company or was it facilitated in some way? Right. 
This makes me go. Hmm. You're so good with the tin foil. I think we should all just strike our best pondering pose here for a second and have a moment of silence. There you go. There's the screenshot for uh, <laughs> for the cover for this this episode. In news that everybody can agree on, who doesn't like uh, Spotify? You know, who doesn't like their music? And and who doesn't like uh, one of the streaming services? Well, here's the news from Spotify that if you are a Spotify Premium subscriber, of which I am one, you now get free basic. Hulu. That's pretty cool. This is amazing. That is good. So I guess I stand behind this a thousand percent. Um, I think that everyone is suffering a little bit from subscription de- fatigue, where we have just too many services that are all really good and we want to subscribe to them all. And all of a sudden you're looking at your, your credit card bill on a monthly basis going, and why is there hundreds of dollars worth of services here? So to the extent that we can find two that we like right. and smoosh them together and maybe they become a little bit more useful as a bundle. I, I think it's just very consumer friendly. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to go cancel my Hulu now, I guess now that I have, cause I do have Spotify premium because it was that same problem that I had with Netflix originally, whenever Netflix only gave you one profile and then my kids would be on there and watching all this stuff. And the next thing, you know, like all of my recommendations on Netflix were like blues clues and like, you know, all these ridiculous kid shows. And I was like, no, this is horrible. And then they finally allowed multiple profiles well, Spotify allowed multiple profiles because then the kids were listening to the music on my spot, adding playlists into my Spotify. And I was like, no. So the premium works really well for me because I have a couple of kids and they like to have their own music. Right. So that's good. I get to have Hulu on top of that. Great. That's going to save me 10 bucks a month that I don't even actually I probably should just cancel it. Anyways. I don't think I ever watch Hulu. But and I pay for Hulu premium because commercials have no place in my world at all i don't have regular television and everything is streaming netflix amazon and hulu and so i wonder if with spotify if i just can upgrade and pay the difference between the basic plan that i get for free and the premium one that rips the ads out from uh, under me yeah that's the question i'm not sure if you can I i don't know if you can upgrade with the the free package to a premium package i think you might have to go whole hog and just go premium package in which case, you're not really saving anything. There isn't really any bundle. You just subscribe into two things you like. You got to go whole hog because they want your bacon. <laughs> I guess uh, I need to uh, check out their FAQ and learn more about this. Uh, Jeremy, are you a gamer? I am not so much of a gamer. Neither is Mr. Travis Wright. He doesn't like to waste his time with such uh, trivial things as games. Not console games. I do play, you know, if I do play games, like uh, the two games that I'll play on my on my phone are Peak and Andy Elevate. Crush. Peak and Elevate. No, Peak and Elevate. These are two brain games. I love them because I'm like, I'm like sharpening all these different mental acuities, right? Which I think is pretty fun. So I do like those. I'll, I'll play those most every day. It takes me maybe five to 10 minutes and I'll go through my little things each day and build my memory and build my, you know, coordination skills and all this other stuff. I think that those types of games are really good to stave off Alzheimer's and, and stuff, but shoot them up games and stuff. I don't, I've never liked those because I don't like violence in general and I don't like blood and gore. I don't like horror movies. So anything that's sort of like bad that I don't like that to go into my subconscious. So I don't actually watch shoot them up games, play shoot them up games, watch horror movies or scary movies. It's just, I don't need that in my subconscious. And so I, I used to have scary dreams back in the day. Now that I don't consume that stuff, I don't have those. Which which saves you more room for all the tinfoil hat theories. There's only so much space up there. You got to leave room. That's true. Keep the that horror movies true. out. Keep the horror stories in and politics. I, uh, I have a, um, a Nintendo Switch and a PlayStation 4. I've never owned an Xbox, but there are a lot of people that do. And they're uh, bringing their platform Xbox Live to the games for iOS and Android. So this is opening up, you know, people with that have Xbox accounts to be able to connect kind of the way that Apple has their play store that connects all these accounts with achievements. Microsoft is doing it their own way. Mm, That's actually really cool. And the article on the verge says that they are also open to uh, having Xbox live on the PS4 or the switch, which It basically becomes an agnostic gaming platform where I would assume you can talk to all your friends across any game. So I could literally be talking smack to Mr. Joel Kahn while while playing Peak or something, I suppose. Or playing one of these brain games. Like, oh, I just kicked your ass, Mr. Joel Kahn. Uh." Makes a lot of sense, too. I think this is sort of the furtheration of the strategy you've been seeing from Microsoft, where it's just embrace and extend, if I can go back to an old phrase. You know, take the, the 
the Windows mobile platform maybe not so successful. So how can they move on to the iOS platform where everyone is onto the Android platform? There's three billion active Android devices. Like Xbox Live doesn't need to be frozen on this one console. It can go everywhere. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, make it a chat platform. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, when you consider how many people are on uh, are on Xbox Live and they love it and they're talking and they're have they got all their little groups and their friends and the different games. Extend that on all the platforms and connect everyone. It could be bigger than WhatsApp, maybe if it was built correctly. Yeah, you know what's really interesting to me is Microsoft has made some really smart moves, and and I hadn't really been paying attention. Now, you know, I use both platforms. I've always had a PC as my primary computer because I am a gamer. Right now, I'm looking at a 40 inch HD 4K display, and I've got a killer box down there, and and I love playing PC games. Uh, but I did not realize just how many good moves Microsoft has actually made. Their valuation as a company right now in 2019 is 805 billion. Wow. They're, they're on their way to being a trillion dollar company. I'm like, when did that happen? Whoa. Wow. Yeah, they're making a lot of smart moves. And what's interesting too is a lot of it is, I mean, there's a lot of consumer facing things like the whole surface line of products, but then a lot of it is behind the scenes stuff, which I think is some bets that have yet to pay off. For example, Microsoft is really big in AI, and there isn't a lot of front end to what they've been doing other than that useless Cortana thing that's on some computers. Like, you don't want to use that. We've got much better voice, voice systems. But meanwhile, they have a lot of strength mm. in AI, and I think it's just a question of them figuring out how to use all that R&D that they built up. When did Bill Gates retire? We know what year he did? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Well, I'm just looking at their stocks from the last. So he retired. Alexa, what year did Bill Gates retire? <laughs> Somebody's somebody tell us now because your device just went off. Right. Well, I'm looking online here. I'm not actually seeing it, but I do know that over the last five years, uh, the stock price of Microsoft has over tripled. That's amazing in the last five years. Very Isn't cool. Uh, from the scientific nerdy news, uh, also from digitaltrends.com, you know, we, we talk about these issues, you know, here on earth and uh, regulation and breaking up the giants. Meanwhile, there is this infinite space out there and we are so small and the universe is so big. And this story that you guys published about the, the Hubble <laughs> telescope captured two colliding galaxies merging to form a super galaxy talk about a monopoly you know these two giants are coming together <laughs> i can i can look at pictures from the hubble telescope all day long and what's astounding i mean it just reveals to you how astounding yeah. the galaxy is there's and heavens and the, and the solar system there's always something amazing that you haven't really seen before this was just one uh picture that one of our our science editors picked up on and said well this is just fantastically cool um, we've done galleries of some of the amazing photos that have been taken by the Hubble telescope. Um, and it's just, you know, we, we talk a lot about what, uh, what uh, Donald Trump has been doing with the budget. Like I would love for us as a country to invest an extra $10 trillion in NASA because it's such amazing stuff. Just the stories like this highlight the work that's going on from, from science and from companies like NASA. Let's do more of it. Mm hmm. I would say this, you know, it's like I've done a whole lot. I, I used to want to be like whenever I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Right. Like because I thought space is so amazing because I grew up in a small, a small town where there wasn't a lot of light pollution. Right. So I could sit out there in the dark and just look at all the amazing stars and just in bewilderment. And then when you realize how many that there are literally billions and billions of stars, we have one star. That's our sun. And we have nine <laughs> planets around this sun. Eight. Eight, maybe, if you want to count Pluto or whatever. It's a dog. Um, it's not screw a Pluto. Uh, hashtag save Pluto. Uh, free Pluto. I don't know. But, yeah, it's so amazing when you think about, like, even in our in our galaxy, right, the Milky Way, like, how many stars there are. It's like, like, your problems are not that big, folks. I mean, we are so small and inconsequential. We, I just, whenever I think of it, I just, I just glow with gratitude going wow we are so lucky to be on this third rock from the sun and have jupiter out there protecting us with its huge gravitational pull that saves us from all these comets and asteroids and stuff right it's just like earth is amazing like how it got to blossom to get to this point and if we can save ourselves from self-destruction and evolve into a, you know, level one civilization or a level two civilization down the road, it's going to be amazing. But we we got to stop warring with ourselves and realize, hey, 
We're all connected. We're all on the, we're all part of the same ecosystem called earth. So can we get along eventually? We got to get along. Preach it. Well, your, this story on space led me to one that I saw on Facebook earlier that I'm going to toss in here. Now you may or may not have heard that Uranus (laughs) actually does smell. Oh boy. True story. And of course I'm talking about the uh, the planet Uranus, they say that uh, they have detected uh, odors like sulfurous farts <laughs> off air, very close to Uranus. And so I, I don't, you can't make this stuff up. Well, you can, but isn't that is, ironic? That is, is ironic. That's, that Uranus smells like ass. Uh, That's great. <laughs> amazing i live for a good uranus joke i mean i remember reading a few years ago that uh scientists discovered that asteroids were hitting it a lot more frequently than you might think meaning uranus is really getting pounded on a daily basis i mean you can't make this stuff up (laughs) (laughs) getting pounded so much that uh uranus has hemorrhoids now so oh wait I, i need i need this for that there we go. Okay. Mission, mission complete. Uh, well, we appreciate you covering the news with us, Jeremy, and you've also brought us a bunch of tech that you are interested in. So let's get to that. First up, the Semtrix Smart Desk. This looks beautiful. Talk about this uh, unit here, what, it, what it's all about. Yeah. If you haven't heard about this, you're going to I'm, I'm going to blow your mind here. So everyone's aware that the desk is changing a little bit, right? We don't have rectangular, stupid blocks of whatever these days. We have rounded corners and we have uh, standing and sitting desks. We have desks that have integrated Bluetooth and integrated cable management systems. This takes the desk to a whole nother level with an integrated computer. It's got three different monitors. It's uh, 72 inches of, of real estate space there. What you can't see is that this company, Semtrex, has built a whole gesture control system directly into it. So it's that right above the integrated keyboard, you can mm. uh, you can move your hand up and down and it'll scroll through the page. You spread your hands apart and it'll zoom and contract. Uh, just really amazing stuff. They've also integrated a document scanner into this thing, which is just fantastic. So instead of having to walk down the hall to go scan a document that I've emailed back to you in some terrible way, you just drop a piece of paper onto your desktop, like that one right there, and the th- push a button and the thing will automatically scan it and import it directly into the computer. You, you could see right there in that video, he's doing gestures with his hands um, to move this stuff. They're not just touching the tablets. Yeah, I, I got a walk through the other day with these guys and it just it blows me away. I, I'm looking forward to trying them out myself. We're, get, we're getting them in next week. So I'll, I'll come back and tell you how it is because I'm really excited about trying this out. No, it's, a, it's a stand-up desk too, so you can raise it up to however high you want it. I think uh, by looking at it, it looks like, you know, the desk is waist level, but those monitors are still really low. So you're going to be like looking down, which is not good ergonomics. You want your monitor to be up if you're, if you're booking. But dude, it looks really awesome. Are those screens touch screen also? Of course. Oh man, that does look really sweet. I noticed the price is really sweet too. Yeah. <laughs> Four grand is, for that bad boy. It yeah. is not But it's cheap. a whole computer. It is a computer and a desk. Exactly. Exactly. What happens when the computer dies? Well, then you go, you, what, you're getting a new computer every year, right? No, you're, no, you're not. <laughs> you got to get a new desk. No, you're not. No, yeah. <clears throat> got to get a new desk. It's definitely expensive, but I think it really points the way in a lot of ways. I, I just, innovation in the workspace feels like a cool thing to me. Yeah, that is, that is some nerdy deliciousness right there. Uh, Travis and I um, just came back from South by Southwest, and we saw a, uh, a cool standing desk about, what, what was the name of the company, Travis? Uplift, up, uplift, uplift desk. desk. Of course, it's not. It doesn't have the integrated computer on it, so we're a little bit behind there. I think the only thing about the desk that we just looked at there is it's really there's not a lot of desk space for right. it. And that, yeah, well, the helps. idea is that I, they made a point about that. They they integrated the keyboard to make some room there, so you can actually throw things on top of that if you're not uh, typing at any given point. But you're right; it is a little bit small. To which point, I would say. Look around you, whatever desk you're at. Uh, I've got this enormous desk I could practically sleep on, and I use it for cube toys. I got my little baseball here, and I like things I don't need to be on the desk. And I think that most of the time, that's mm-hmm. probably the case. We don't really need stuff on our desktop. We do. I I need my fidget spinner. Right. Well, I would say this though. <clears throat> I don't know that I like the keyboard built into the desk because I actually have the the keyboard that splits. Oh, okay. 
right? Because it's, it's more ergonomic, right? It's way more comfortable because as a bigger dude, if I have a smaller keyboard, I'm like, Mur! and I notice that like, man, I'm scrunched up at the end of the day, but I have these things spread out. So it fits my fingers at the right place. And like, ah, it's way more ergonomic. I don't have this, the back deck strain. Cause that's one thing we're sitting at computers. If you're a computer nerd or are you working the computers or you, you know, have a job where you sit on a desk, People are sitting on their desk 8, 10, 12 hours a day sometimes, right? So these stand-up desks are really helpful. They need to have something to, to make you get up and move. And um, I like that. I think it's more, especially if you got an ergonomic things built in. But things like this kind of, it's cool. But if something goes wrong with that keyboard, now what? Now you got to get a new keyboard. Or you got to, it's, it's, I don't like them. They're all built in. Have them be separate components that can connect or whatever, but I do like the fully integrated sort of thing. Let us know how you like that. Uh, well, you're getting them all set up there at Digital Trends Office? Yeah, we're getting a bunch of them, see how they work together and integrate. The IT department is going to help us out with it because, I mean, you have to. It's an integrated computer system, too. So it'll be interesting to see how it works. And you're right. There are some issues there, like maybe you want an ergonomic keyboard instead. That make, That's a great point. I hadn't even thought about that. So it's just a question. We got to try it out and see what it what it actually is like. Yeah, you guys will be able to see the review at digitaltrends.com. So uh, so watch for that. Uh, next up on your list of cool things in tech, you've got this from thisisground.com. It is a mod laptop three leather briefcase, and it's not cheap. It's six hundred dollars, but apparently it's a magical uh, briefcase. Tell us about this. Yeah, I was joking to you guys before. It's company's called This Is Ground, and it's uh, this is why I'm broke, frankly. Um, <laughs> the guy who travels a lot, I'm sure you guys travel all the time too. You, you know, you have to have a place for your stuff. Uh, you need the right gear for when you're on the road. And what struck me about this is, if you can see in some of these pictures, look at all those little pouches. Like everything's got the right spot. Here's where your cables go. Here's where your headphones go. Here's where your pencils are. Uh, and when I'm on the when I'm in an airplane. Uh, unzip that thing and i can pull my laptop out and i got my charging cable right here and i got the pens right here so i can take some notes it just it puts everything in exactly the right place which i find i'm a little anal about stuff like that i want my stuff in the right spots and this is just mm -hmm. boom here it is and then on top of that right. it's it's spectacularly high quality leather too well and it also comes so you have this you have this bad it, boy. it comes with headless you people so there's there's that <laughs> Yeah, I paid six hundred bucks for that thing. I, worth every penny. I like I like how some of these tech companies now are doing this stuff here. Now I've not actually heard of this company, Quad Pay, but I've seen there's other ones like Affirm. Um, you know, is good, and you can actually cut some of your big web purchases in half or you know multiple payments. Like I got a new big mattress that I don't know about a year ago, and I, I did did the Affirm thing. I was like, eh, I don't want to drop fifteen hundred bucks all right now. Oh, but zero percent interest over twelve months, and I just make a payment every time that was no credit check no, that was awesome so I'm, that's good so i like how they have these, these those those types of uh, those payment systems i just i don't necessarily know how they're making money whenever it's interest free i guess it must be if you're missing payments or something you're getting charged i'm not sure but missing payments is never good for that credit score folks or maybe companies like this is ground pay them to enable that service i don't know that's a good question yeah i don't know yeah it's handy, though. I mean, I know it's really good. So, Jeremy, I'm sure you were at the Consumer Electronics Show, as I was this year, and there was a huge home section, smart home section, oh, yeah. bigger than ever before, with lots of devices for controlling all the things in your home. And and you, uh, you, you kind of um, honed in on this one particular thermostat control that you like from Johnson Controls called the Glass Smart. What is this? So, yeah, well, uh, this is a smart thermostat, and you're like, well, I've seen smart thermostats before. I've got a Nest. What's interesting about this one is how gorgeous this product is. So that is an OLED screen right there, very high resolution, pops right at the touch screen, of course, as well. So you walk up to it, the screen pops on, and then you can control the temperature just by moving around through some settings in there. Um, it also integrates uh, a variety of of, of climate control features and it can tell you what the air quality is around you which is something the nest doesn't do so it builds off the nest in a few ways but more than anything it's taking something that we don't think about just a control the thermostats for years were just interfaces it was a way to turn the thing on and off and that was it right and here they've turned it into a work of art which i think is just fantastic it's something you want to have on your wall rather than something you need to have on your wall and yeah, there's a picture of it right there. Unobtrusive, attentive, and beautiful on any wall. It really does fit in quite nicely. It's very space age. 
And we all love data, right? I love how it says, oh, you've saved 12% this week by managing it more effectively. That's one thing that I do like about the Nest. So I have Google Fiber, and that was one thing that if you got Google Fiber, it was a special deal. They'd give you Nest also, which is like, yeah, let Google be more in my life. This is great. It is integrated. You can put, a, put Google in my head. Yeah, let's get it in there. But one thing I like about it is like, hey, Travis, so nice and friendly. Hey, Travis, it's time to change your air filter, right? It's like, oh, that's good. I need to remember that. And then like there was smoke in my hallway um, a couple of weeks ago whenever I was out of town. I think actually this this past weekend. And uh, and I was and I noticed that and then I contacted the family. And then apparently it was it was my 17 year old son smoking weed. So that right. was Thanks, Nest. That was that was great. To, that was great. To, great to find out. Did it there. offer some advice on some parenting? Was like, let me tell you, how I handle this awkward situation with your son. Uh, well, here's what I would do. Yeah, take take away his devices and uh, elbow drop him from the top rope. <laughs> uh, here's another article from your site, Jeremy. The Digital Trends Top Tech of CES 2019 Award Winners. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff here, guys. Again, you can go see all of this in the show notes at badboysoftech.com. And there's links to this, but there's one in particular that you said you were uh, really excited about. That's this Philips Smart Sleep Snoring Relief Band. Or, or So you're a snorer? You know, a few years ago, I would have said, I'm not a snorer. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And maybe that's just because uh, I can't hear myself when I'm asleep. But my wife lately has been on me saying, Jeremy, you, you snore like, like, uh, like there's something wrong with you. And so I've been trying to figure out, because there's a million different, devices that will help you deal with this problem and this one seems like uh, it comes at the, the problem from a slightly different approach which is that so this is a band that you wear around your chest around your torso uh there are other ones that sit on your wrist uh but vibrations on your wrist are going to wake you up and going to wake your your partner up your spouse up so this is a little bit less obtrusive because of its location and they say that it's not even going to vibrate enough to wake you just enough to make you roll over or whatever it takes to stop you from snoring so Sounds like a really interesting concept, um, and I, I'm just looking forward to trying that out. Here's Travis Wright. You could use one of those. That's true. Actually, I have a I have a pillow that uh, when I snore a certain volume, it's a Bluetooth pillow called Zeke Z E E Q, which is at the house. Taking a note right now. So, yeah, it's actually it's, it's pretty cool. Um, the, the only problem that I have with it is like the it sometimes has some Bluetooth connectivity issues. So like if I go in the other room and then I come back, oh now it's not paired. Like why is it not paired now? Is it just not? I guess it has a very small paired frequency area that it connects to it on or something. But um, so you go to the restroom, you come back, but uh, leave your phone there. But what's interesting about it is like <clears throat> I like to put. Uh, like delta tones or different brainwave tones on the pillow because it has these speakers built in. And so you can literally hear these tones. And then if you snore at a certain volume, the bed just kind of does a little and you're like, oh yeah. And then like you just change your change your position. How does the aluminum of your tinfoil hat interfere with that? <laughs> well I, I don't I have well I have a I have an aluminum face mask. Oh there we go. That I wear for sleeping. So so I have to point this out because it's right there next to the snoring band on this page. You also listed the Kohler Numi 2.0 Smart Toilet. <laughs> what does this do and why do I need it? Yeah, uh, and you have to ask the question, do I really need uh, Alexa built into my toilet? Um, Alexa, it's and a apparently you flusher. Do. <laughs> <laughs> What's, yeah. what's interesting here, I, companies like Kohler have been pushing design in toilets for a long time. So you can see from that picture, like this does not look anything like your ordinary toilet. Um, so there, there, there's that part that it's neat looking. But beyond that, there is a lot of uh, functionality built in there. So it automatically detects your presence when you walk up near it. Uh, the lights will pulse on slowly. So you're not stumbling around in the dark if you're getting up in the middle of the night. Um, and yeah, the joke, of course, is you could say Alexa flush the toilet, but that's not really what you wanted to do. Uh, maybe you want to play some music. Maybe you want to get the weather report. You know, if you're in the bathroom anyway, doing some <laughs> stuff. Like Come on, you got your phone with you. Who goes to the bathroom without their phone? <laughs> well, you got all that's that stuff true. with you right so there. Now, what, what you really need is you need like Alexa, uh, lower the lid so that way well, it does, it does <laughs> eliminate that. conflict the, from anybody. Does. Else. It the does, seat automatically. detects your presence and automatically lifts 
when you walk near it and oh, soft interactive smart lighting so i guess you could set the lighting you know like a smart bulb to any color you want now there's actually here's a practical application as we get more into health tech you know because we had john nasta um who is one of the leading health tech uh, futurists on the show a couple episodes ago what if the toilet could detect the uh, the the quality of your excrement, as it were, to detect if there's you know bad bacteria or something else in there, and it would issue a color or send to your app. You know, hey, you need to go see your doctor. There's something going on here. You know, there's blood in your stool. <laughs> the crap app. Crap that's app. good. That's no, like, we joke about it, but yeah, that's, that's a, a fantastic point. And I think that as we build even more sensors into devices like this, I think that the world of, of healthcare and health tech is just set to explode because of things just like that. How can we, things you wouldn't ordinarily be studying, all of a sudden it's very easy to study. And that, <laughs> But that also means like... <laughs> it's just so many jokes around this. The toilet's like, you had corn? <laughs> <laughs> No, the, the thing about that is like, when did, when did I have corn? <laughs> but that's a, a gold member reference, isn't it? That's Austin Powers. <laughs> Fat bastard. Like, right? He was in the bathroom. He was like, when did I have corn? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All, all right. That's a showstopper right there, board up for the fact that we have one more piece of tech that, uh, that Jeremy's brought to us. And uh, this is a Samsung product. What is this? So this is the first new screen technology in a long time so you've got your oled screens of course you got your lcd screens this is micro led technology so last year samazon came out with this enormous 146 inch television uh and we we're all like well that's cool and all but like i'm never gonna buy a tv the size of my living room wall because i have a wall i don't want a tv there so the what when, what Samsung said at the time was that these are going to be modular things. And I was like, yeah, sh I'll believe it when I see it. And then, oh, my God, this year we actually saw it. These are little modular pieces which snap together and lock together to form a TV of whatever size or shape you want. And so the first product hmm. they're going to put out that you can actually sell besides that wall size thing you're probably not going to buy, there's a 75-inch micro LED TV. It's going to come out some point this year. I don't know how much it's going to cost, probably an arm and a leg. But forget about the actual product and think about the technology behind it. So think about little screens the size of a, of a cell phone, for example, and they lock together. And so you can have a TV that's a long, thin thing that sits on that strip of space next to the door that's unused. And maybe it shows you the weather on every day that's coming up. Or picture a, you know, four or five screens cascading across the back of your couch on the wall back there. And it's you know, push one to do something and another one's got a display going and you can, or you want to watch several different uh, baseball games, for example, and you've got TV screens next to the actual TV. I, th I think it just opens up a lot of different possibilities. So it just really kind of blew me away. I just want to say this. We had a few of the um, digital trends um, articles on the website today on our show. And I just now finally got the freaking ad blocker <laughs> off thing. Like <clears throat> I realized I had three, I had ghostery on there. We had Veronita, which is a blockchain ad blocker. And then my other ad blocker. And I could not figure out for the life of me how to get that freaking bar off of there. And then it was cause ghostery was on and I had to trust your site. So if you're having trouble trying to get that ad blocker off of those uh, digital trends pages, that's, that's it. I had to appreciate it. If you look at the ads, they keep us in business and those pay my salary. That's good. There you go. So now I can look at this, these stories. Now let's, let's go back. What was that first story we're talking about? The the, the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it back to the toilet. The only other point I wanted to make about that toilet, we we were. It's easy to joke about like toilet humor and whatnot, but I, I really do think that there's a lot of data surrounding our personal lives that is going to start getting processed. So we worry a lot about like mm -hmm. about what's happening to your own personal data. But if you think about the the uh, the tracker, the, the thing you're wearing on your wrist that's maybe monitoring your heart rate or your blood pressure or something in the near future, that's an incredible amount of really useful data that we've never had access to before. So keeping that data private, sure, that's a big deal. But think about where that can go and how much use a doctor could make of like real-time access to all of your vital stats. I think the world is just going to – I think health tech is really going to be transformed in the next couple of years. Is this part of uh, the Digital Trends oh, Tech for Good initiative? I know that you've got something going on there. You want to talk about that? I, I hope it is, yeah. Yeah, we've been, we've been pushing tech for good for a little while. Um, 
I was mentioning before that there's this weird narrative in, in the world that we live in where people are afraid of technology and kind of getting mad at technology because of companies like Facebook that are maybe abusing our private data in certain ways, or, or this fear, maybe not even founded, but just this fear that companies are spying on us or abusing the trust that we've placed in them. So yeah, we created this page. You can see it at tech for good, digitaltrends.com slash tech dash four dash good, just underscoring all of the great ways that technology companies and people and scientists are using technology for good, not to take advantage of us, not to abuse our trust and our, our, our relationships with them, but, but to, to improve people's lives. So you see this, we did a story recently on uh, the game changer charity, which um, brings game technology to sick kids in hospitals. Like how you can't argue with that. That's fantastic. Or a streaming music service that plants trees. If you're listening as a, as and, a and pays to, artists in Bitcoin. Got to love Bitcoin, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we, we know a little bit about that. So that's kind of cool to uh, see that in this robot is built to feed dinner to people who can't feed themselves. That is some baller tech right there. Totally. And it's just, it's, it's actually not, it wasn't even very hard for us to start uncovering these stories. It's just, you have to put a little bit of effort in thinking, this is, this is out there as well as, yeah, there's some privacy concerns that are out there, but this is out there. This is going on right now. And there's a lot of companies that really actually care and are trying to make a difference. So we just wanted to underscore that. And you also have your show, which uh, both Travis and I have been privileged to appear on called Digital Trends Live. In fact, is it live right now? Uh, we it might, might be. We yeah. might very well be. If you go to digitaltrends.com and you can, you can go to either live to slash live or you could, you could check in the navigation bar right next to the logo. There's a little red live button that pops on when we're live. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. We're live. Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific for a full hour. And we're in the process of building out a second hour of programming uh, to add to that, which is just a lot of work. I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard to do. You guys know. But yeah, we're bringing you all the great stories that we cover uh, every day at Digital Trends. We're doing unboxings. We're doing uh, product reviews. We're, show we're doing interviews with important personalities like yourselves. And uh, it's just it's been a really cool initiative and, and a lot of fun to be part of. When are you going to start doing boxings, though? Like, show us putting things in the box and sealing it up. Reboxing. We should do that, actually. You know, it would be great if, if we unbox something and then send it off to somebody. Like, now we're going to give it away. We're going to box it up for you and then give it away. Oh, like a, a, like a pay it forward, this box. And then that person unboxes it and does a video. Then they rebox it and send it to somebody else. And everybody gets to play with the toys. No one's mm -hmm. actually playing with the toys. Everyone's playing with the box at that point. It's true. Uh, Jeremy Kaplan from uh, Digital Trends, thanks so much for joining us today, my friend. We do appreciate it. Been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And do you know how we end our show, Jeremy? I have no idea. Okay. Well, we're going to tell you right now because you guys should subscribe and review and follow. Leave your comments because we want to know what's going on. And until the next episode, stay bad. The bad boys of tech.